All praises to the most high. Let me know how it's looking in the, uh, let me know how the audio in the uh, video is. All praises. Let me first give all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten son, who most people call Jesus, but his real name is Yahweh Shai. All right. This is the brother Sa coming black at y'all. We got a good one today. Um, man, I want to get a, a quick scripture. I want to kind of take my time with this, and I, and I hope it's edifying. This is um, this is this is just hilarious what we're seeing. So according to the title of the video, we're gonna go into it. There are some some YouTubers who have completely lost their minds over Jesus Christ being a so-called black man, and it reminded me of the scripture right quick in in Psalm chapter two, Psalm two and one. It says, "Why do the heathen rage?" And the people imagine a vain thing. And y'all are going to see a lot of uh, raging from, from other people. Now, here's what I find very interesting. For 500 years, the world has been believing that Jesus Christ, God, Mary, Joseph, uh, the Egyptians, the everybody in the Bible is white. And now when information gets presented that... They aren't, you know, now there's something wrong with it. Um, so let me know, let me know how the audio and, and, and video is sounding. Somebody said there's no, there's no audio. I think that's your, on your end, family. So I think you got to turn your, uh, your volume up, but all pray. Okay. All praise to the most high. We're, we're going to get into it. And this is in response to, to two videos that, um, that have just aired on YouTube uh, in response to the brother Jay-Z. He's got a video coming out called Clarence. And uh, matter of fact, we can watch, we can watch that real quick. Uh, the Book of Clarence. I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen the uh, the trailer for it. So let me just pull this up real quick. And make sure this is my first live stream, y'all. So I I would appreciate it if y'all y'all like and share. Run it up right quick, man. Um, I plan on doing more live streams on this channel, but um, let me um, let me show y'all real quick. So if you're not familiar, Jay-Z got a movie coming out. I believe it's later next month or this month. Um, and he portrays Christ as a so-called black man. Basically, y'all can look at the video yourself. We're not going to go through the entire trailer. But uh, there's a man named Clarence. He sees Christ and he gets envious of him and basically tries to replic replicate what he did. Um, but I want to sp skip to the point where they actually see Christ. Well, first, here's John. There goes John the Baptist, and they, they depict him as a brother. And then later, they see Christ and the 12 disciples. Watch this. There's the 12. There's Christ. They blur his face. You can't even buy power like that. I want to be like that in 10 years. But you see his hand is, uh, you see his hand is, you know, is melan it's got melanin. Uh, what's the... Let me see. Matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can pull up the actor because they, they, they don't show it right here, but you can just look at the cast and it'll show you who the actor is. All right. Let me see. Because I remember. Is it Omar Sy? I believe. No, sorry. Nicholas Pinnock. This is the brother who they have playing Christ right here. This brother. Which is far more historically accurate than. You know, the blonde haired blue eyed Jesus that a lot of our grandmothers, mothers, fathers and aunties have, you know, in hanging up in our in our houses growing up that we bow down to that have been engraved into our minds and our subconscious to now we look down on ourselves because we look the opposite of that white Jesus. You know what I mean? So that's the brother. I believe I'm almost 100 percent sure that's the brother who is playing um, Yahushai, Christ in the book of Clarence. So in response to this, people are losing their minds. They're very upset. Let's just let's show a, a brief clip of one YouTuber. And um, their YouTube handle is Project Egg Roll. That is what their YouTube channel is called. Their YouTube channel, again, is called. It's just you can see it for yourselves. Project Egg Roll. OK, that's that's what they decided to name their channel. And they give a, a uh, you know, a response to this video. 
or, or sorry, response to the to the movie coming out. And just listen to the animosity that they speak of, uh, uh, you know, a so-called black messiah with. I, f uh, I forgot uh, where it was, but this is, uh, you know, fair use. Just giving my thoughts and commentary on, you know, their video. But let me keep going. It was a shot of them meeting with Jesus and Jesus is in a cloak. You can't see his face or anything like that, but you see his hands and his hands were black. Oh, there it is. <laughs> You hear the level, put a one in the chat. Do y'all do y'all see the, the disdain in their voice when they say they saw his hands in the movie? They saw Christ's hands and his hands were black. Let me get a scripture real quick. Let me get a quick Bible verse because what we are seeing is, is basically Bible prophecy come to pass before our very eyes. This is why the Bible says this right here. This is 2nd Ezra and 13. And I'll start at verse, mm, okay, Second Genesis 13, and I'll start at verse 29. It says, Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, judgment day. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell therein, I'm sorry, of them that dwell on the earth. And then when you keep going in verse 32, it says, And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen, which I showed you before. Then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. He's, but he's going to come to the astonishment of the whole world. Because the world doesn't expect a you know, so-called black messiah to return. First of all, the world doesn't even believe in God to begin with. Then of those who do believe in God, they certainly don't believe in a, in a, a man of color cracking the sky coming to save his people. So that's why it says that he's going to come to the astonishment of those that dwell on the earth. And I'm not going to play too much of their video because um, they start using four and five letter words that I prefer not to use on this channel. Um, but the level of hatred that they speak with, uh, you know, a black, the idea of a black messiah is, I mean, it's just fervent racism. So um, I want to jump to the next video. Uh, a brother sent this to me and it, it was just hilarious hearing some of the terms that this woman chooses to use. And I'm going to we're going to go into the Bible. We're going to go into. Um, some historical accounts. We're going to go into a few things and just, you know, just give a, a good example of how what these people say is incorrect and give a good defense for when you're presented with this information. Right. So let's go into this video that this woman, uh, Media Holic, this is a, a woman and a, uh, she also is rather upset at the thought of a black messiah. So, um, we're going to go into this. But before we do, y'all got to make sure y'all like and share the video a few more times. All right. This is Saad's first live stream on this channel. I'm trying to get it popping. So um, make sure y'all run it up. But let, let me start this video. I recommend it highly. But before The Equalizer 3, one of the trailers that played was for a film that I previously had never heard of before called The Book of Clarence. And after seeing that trailer, I immediately knew that not only did I definitely want to go see that movie, but also that I would be making at least probably two or three videos about the film. Clarence, he needs miracles. I have a plan. I can see! I can see! <laughs> Sent me to deliver his message. I am your new messiah. Yes, I must wait. Ah, stop that. If you guys are familiar with my videos, you probably understand uh, what is attracting me to this project. And no, it's not the possibility that this is actually just a really good or decent movie. Instead, is that this seems to be on its face one of the most blatant attempts of historical blackwashing I have ever seen. And so what she is saying is that this that this movie that's about to come out is an obvious case of historical blackwashing. Now, if anybody doesn't know what blackwashing is, it's the opposite of whitewashing. Whitewashing is a form of revisionist history where Europeans have gone throughout the throughout the annals of time. They've gone into history and they have depicted everybody as people that look like them. That's why when you watch the Ten Commandments, Moses is white, Pharaoh is white, Canaanites are white, people of Midian are white. Everything is white. God's white. Everything. Uh, so notice it's very interesting. How many how many movies about a white Christ come out 
every single year, right? How many movies about a white Christ come out every year? And does she make several videos about those? No, she does not. But when a so-called Black Messiah movie comes out, now she's okay. We got to make three videos on it. Y'all see this? Um, we're gonna we're gonna dismantle her intellectually here in a second. But I want to let her go. I'm gonna keep letting her speak. Not only that, but we also got to throw in some blasphemy against Christianity because, of course, why not? But anyway, regarding the project Vanity Fair, which did this entire glowing piece about it, they write that this ambitious tale pulls in classic biblical figures like Jesus, Mary Magdalene, and John the Baptist, but all with an unexpected twist. Like in The Heart of They Fall, writer-director Samuel puts black characters at the center of Clarence, exploding another classic Hollywood movie genre with a fresh take full of humor and heart. Most of the stories told in the Old West didn't include people of color. We know they existed. We know we've been here just as long as anyone else, says Jay-Z. Who produced the film and credits Samuel with finding fresh ways and perspectives to talk about these stories. You see, that's such a short quote, but there's so much to unpack there. The idea that people of color aren't featured in like biblical stories. Nazareth, uh, Palestine, if we go Old Testament, Egypt, these are places where people of color in inhabited they so she admits palestine egypt i can't remember the other uh, location she named that people of color were there she admits that that the levant region people of color were there so then the question begs well why don't we see them represented uh, represented in uh paintings why don't we see them represented in movies why don't we see them represented in plays i'm talking about plays paintings and movies that are featured about uh the bible Let's see what else she says. They, they are people of color in these stories. Uh, Jesus himself, uh, arguably a person of color. He was Hebrew. So I'm not really sure if Samuel, the director of this film, is referring to the fact that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, they use just white guys to portray Jesus, which, I mean, they also, if you know anything about worldwide Christianity, have depictions of Jesus being Korean or black. And that's kind of what I think is amazing about Jesus is that he's supposed to represent all people. And maybe so she thinks it's she finds it funny when apparently we blaspheme Christianity. Um, but she just said Jesus is supposed to represent all people. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, one, Jesus is supposed to represent all people. Number two, even if Jesus represented all people, that does not mean that Jesus Christ was all colors or that you can depict him in any way, shape or form that you so choose to. Because she just admitted that it's more than like more likely than not. Christ being a Hebrew and being in the land in which he was, that he was a man of color. So you don't get to take a man of color and now depict him as Korean or depict him as anything other than what he is. But it was never it was never a, a, a problem when a white Jesus was depicted. But now when a black Jesus is depicted, now it's a problem. Let's keep going. Maybe Samuel is taking issue with the fact that Jesus is being portrayed as white sometimes, specifically because it's not historically accurate that he would have been like blonde haired or blue eyed. But then if that's the case, trying to portray him as black, also not very historically accurate. And it's also it doesn't make sense to say, oh, well, we know people of color were there. It's like, what do you mean were there? Did they exist during the time that Christ walked the planet? Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they were specifically in Jerusalem. And now, once I saw this part, I said, I have to make a video about this. I said, this is the moment when I saw her face. Let's go. Let's go back. When she spoke like this, as if she was so smart and how people who believe that Jesus Christ is a so-called black man are essentially dumb. When she made this face with that tone, I told myself, I absolutely have to make a video about this. So she's saying that. Yeah, black people, of course, they existed <laughs> back during the time of Christ, but that it's not historically accurate that he was to, to depict him as a black person. Again, she took no problem because I haven't seen a video of hers or anybody for that matter denouncing and going against a white Christ. But now when a black one, a so-called black one is introduced, now it's a problem. So we're going to see if, in fact, it is a historical plausibility that uh, Christ was a so-called black man. And I want to examine something that she said that was absolutely, so positively, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. She's not only is she questioning whether or not Christ was black, that's one subject, right? But now 
she's now questioning whether or not that there were even black people in the region, which is absolutely some of the most ridiculous stuff ever. Shalom, Ariella. What's up, my brother? Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let her speak a little bit more and then we're going to go into this. Right. So let's keep going. Chilling with him. And I don't say that to be offensive. Like I'm half Chinese. It's not like I thought there were a ton of Chinese people just also in the crowds hearing Jesus speak. I don't really know much about this director, but from just the concept of this film itself to his interviews, it seems like he's very much a black identitarian. We have some of the more wacky stuff he said trying to promote this movie. But before we get to that, I do want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor. Okay. We'll, we'll revisit that. But later in the video, she um, I believe later in the video, in like a few minutes, she comes with the narrative of, well, he was Middle Eastern. Put a one in the chat if you've ever heard. Well, they, he wasn't black. He wasn't white either. He was Middle Eastern. Put a one in the chat if you've heard this this argument before. Put a one in the chat if you've heard this argument. And um, there's there's a reason why. Uh that's a flawed logic. OK. Right. Exactly. Ariella. So let's just examine the definition of the term Middle Eastern. Let me see. Here we go. So the term Middle East is in an English term. So it's a rather new concept, a Middle Eastern. And it is a geopolitical region. Again, what is the Middle East? It's a geopolitical region. Middle Eastern is not a race. Middle Eastern is not an identity. Middle Eastern is not a, uh, a, a nationality. Middle Eastern is a location. He was, Jesus wasn't black. He wasn't white either. He was Middle Eastern. You sound as dumb as saying Jesus was Middle Eastern as you do when you say someone's, well, he's not black. He's not white. He's Southwesterner. What does a Southwesterner look like? What does a Northeasterner look like? What does a Westeasterner look like? Or a, a, a Southeasterner look like? What is a Pacific, or sorry, a, a North, South, you see what I'm saying? What does that mean? He was Middle Eastern. What pe people fail to realize, and we're about to dive into it into a minute, that there are several groups of people that have lived in the Middle East. All right. And look what it goes on to say. The, it's a geopolitical region encompassing the Arabian Peninsula, the Levant, Turkey, Egypt, Iraq, and Iran, Iran, right? So it gives you a map right here. This is the Middle East. You see it, it's got the Sudan. The Sudan. You have Sudanese people to this very day. What do Sudanese people, y'all see the map? On the, on the bottom right there. Sudan. So the Sudanese are Middle Easterners, according to the definition of Middle Eastern. Are we going to say that people in the Sudan are not uh, black people? How stupid does that sound? Are we going to say that uh, people in Egypt that they weren't? Well, some will. Some will say that the Egyptians were not black. But let's now go into some geography and let's go into a little bit of history and see if any of these claims make any sense whatsoever. So first thing we're going to do is address her point about whether or not there was a black presence in Israel, right? In the Levant, in the Middle East. So let's go to Genesis chapter 10 and let's see what it says. It says, Genesis 10 and 6, the descendants of Ham were Cush, Misraim, Put, and Canaan. Now, why are we here, Hassan? Well, when you look at the definition of Cush, the Cushites still exist. Cush, Ethiopians, Will anybody disagree that people in Ethiopia are uh, melanated people, that they are a so-called black people? Nobody in their right mind would. Right. And it says Cush is the son of Ham. OK, let's let's remember that Cush is the son of Ham. And he has a brother named Mitzrayim. Well, Mitzrayim is where you get. Egypt. The Egyptians. So if Cush is a so-called black man, all right, the so-called black people, it would beg to reason that it's likely that Egypt, just their neighbors, would also look similar. But that's not even the point. That's not even the point of why we're going here. Let's, let's continue on. Let's keep going. Let's get to the point. Verse uh, 8. Watch this. Let me zoom in a little bit. It says, Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. 
Since he was the greatest hunter in the world, his name became proverbial. People would say, I'm reading in the NLT, this man is like Nimrod, the greatest hunter in the world. He built his kingdom in the land of Babylon. This Cushite, this so-called black man, built his empire in the land of Babylon. Who knows where the land of Babylon is today? Iraq. Let's keep going. Well, let's just see. Let's just see if I don't know if I know what I'm talking about. All right, hold on. Uh, was Babel? Here we go. Babel, Babylon, confusing. Babel. It says modern day Hila. Right. Let's see where is Hila. Hila is a city in Iraq. Hila is a city in Iraq. And again, it said earlier in the definition of a Middle Eastern, someone who lives in the Levant region, someone who lives in the Arabian Peninsula. That would include Iraq, genius. Let's continue on. Let me know. Put a one in the chat. Am I, am I too quiet? Am I too, am I too loud? How's the, how's the audio? Because I'm, I'm in the library. I just finessed this little private room. So y'all see that someone's been doing some real estate research in the background. I just... I bam, I finessed in the room. So let me know if I'm being too loud. Or let me know if it's if it's all good. Let me know if it's too quiet. I can speak up. To hell with it. Who cares? Okay, we're good. All praises. So um let's let's revisit this one more time. All right. Um okay. So again, part of where uh Kush, sorry, not Kush, Nimrod, who's a descendant of Kush, and again, modern day Kushites are Ethiopians, the beginning of his kingdom was in Iraq. Part of his kingdom was in Iraq, modern day Iraq, the Middle East. Right. Let's keep going. It says what the, uh, he built his kingdom in the land of Babylon with the cities of Babylon, Erech, Akkad, Akkad. That's where you get Akkadian from and Kalne. Let's let's look at some of these other ones. Erech. Where is Erech? Uh, it says a city 40 miles uh, northwest of Ur toward Babylon on the left bank of the Euphrates River. Again, over there in the Arabian Peninsula. Let's look at uh, Akkad or Akkad, a city in North Babylon, a place in Babylon. Again, where and where is Babylon modern day? Iraq. These are all places in Iraq in that region. Kalne, an Assyrian city, a city of Babylon. Let's keep going. Um. It says, and then from there, he expanded his territory to Assyria, building the cities of Nineveh. So he, he had his lands from Iraq all the way even to Assyria. Do you guys see this? Now, nobody will dispute if Cushites are black or not. And this man, Nimrod, who's a descendant of Cush, his kingdom expanded from all the way to from Iraq into parts of Assyria. So to come with this ridiculous statement that... Oh, well, Christ, uh, there's no way he could have been black. Black people aren't over there. Uh, I would, I'm not going to say just because I'm Asian that there were Chinese people in the crowd. That's a ridiculous statement. And it shows your lack of understanding in, in history and geography. Now, let's continue in reading a little bit, because look what it also says. Let's go to verse uh, 13. Mizraim, again, who was the brother of Cush, son of Ham, was the ancestor of the Luddites, Anamites, Lehabites, Nafutahites, uh, Pathrus, uh, what is that? Pathrusites, Castalites, and the Katorsites, what is that? Kaftarites, from whom, this is the Kaftarites, from whom the Philistines came. From whom the Philistines came. So the Philistines are also Hamites in the Bible. Well, if you actually if you actually read the Bible. You would know that the Philistines, not modern day Palestinians, they have no relation to the ancient Philistines, but the Philistines in the Bible were right by us. They enslaved us. That's how close they were to us. They were so close to us. Matter of fact, watch this. I'm so glad I remember this. All praise to the most high. Watch this. Here's how close the Philistines were to the Israelites. Um, watch this. Let's just read this in the Bible. Um. What does it say? Uh, let's see. Um, 
let's see, let's see. This is First Samuel. Let me see if I can find this. Here's how close the Philistines were to the Israelites. Perfect. Let me share my screen. First Samuel 5, and let's start at 1. And the Philistines took the Ark of God. We went to war against the Philistines, and we lost. They took the Ark and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. Now, Ashdod is, is technically a city in Israel. That's our territory. That's for, so the Philistines, who are so-called melanated people, who are so-called black people, they're a Hamitic people. There are people whose uh, uncles are the Cushites, who nobody would dispute are black. They lived in Ashdod. Well, where is Ashdod? What is Ashdod? A city in where? Israel. Okay, well, let's keep going. It says, uh, basically, when they, they took this, they took the ark and they put it in their temple, their pagan god. So then God basically sent them, it says, emeralds. So then what they did is, look, they understood that God was punishing them. So here's what they did. Watch this. Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going in chapter six. They said, what are we going to do? God keeps punishing us because we have these arcs. So here's what they did. They took gold. They took five golden mice um, and then they gave an offering. And then what did they do? They tied it to, I think, a goat. Let's see. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Here we go. Look. Now, therefore, make a new cart and make two and take two milk kind on which there have come no yoke and tie the kind to the cart and bring their calves home from them. So then what did they do? They tied. They took the ark, put it on uh, the back of like a like a, a cow and then gave us gold and then sent it to us. See that you can read this in first Kings chapter five and chapter six. Then we found it and then we rejoiced. That's how close these Philistines, Hamites, people who nobody will dispute are so-called black people. Um, Cushites, nobody will dispute if they're black, right? That's how close they live to us. They live so close that when they stole something from us after we lost a battle to them, they could take a cow, tie the Ark of the Covenant to it, slap it on the butt and say, go to the Israelites. And it did. That's how close they were. Now, let's go back to, let me show something, matter of fact, real quick. All right. And we're going to continue diving into this. One second. Um, OK, perfect. Because, again, when you look at the definition of Middle East, one of the definitions is the Levant. Now, look at this map here. You see the kingdom of Israel. You see the kingdom of Judah right here. You have Moab, Ammon, etc. But look who is just north. Look who's just north. Let me know if y'all can see that. Put a one in check. Can y'all see Tyre and Zidon right there in the north? Y'all see Tyre and Zidon in the north? Put a, put a one in the chat. Right at the top of the screen, you should see Tyre and Zidon. Now, why does this matter? Who is Tyre and who is Zidon? Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go right back to the Bible. And we're going to revisit uh, what we were just talking about earlier. Um, but let's let's get look at. OK, so Tyre. So you have Tyre and Zidon. Let's look at Tyre. Oops, wrong one. Let's take a look at Tyre. Strong's age 68, 65. It says Tyre, Tyrus, a rock, a place in Palestine. Is it Sidon? I think I'm gonna look for my bad. Sidon. Here we go. My bad. Sidon. So you have Tyre and Sidon. Genesis 10 and 15. This is more of Ham's descendants. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon, the ancestor of the Zidonians. And again, let's go back to that map. My fault. Hold on. Uh, I just totally lost the map. Hold on. Okay, so boom. Here you have Zidon. Where are they just north of? Israel. Now, why do I bring this up? Let's go back to the Bible. 
Let's go right back to the Bible. And let's see what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew 15. And we'll start at verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Zidon. Christ went to a place just north of Israel, Tyre and Zidon, who are descendants of Canaan. Canaan is a descendant of Ham. One of Ham's descendants is Cush, who nobody will dispute are melanated people, so-called black people. So Christ went up there. And what did he encounter? A woman of Canaan. This is a Canaanite woman. But I thought there weren't any melanated people around that time during the time of Christ. Now, we're going to go to specifically the Jews, the Israelites, and their description in the Bible here momentarily. But what I wanted to do was establish that there was a so-called black presence in that in that region to begin with. So if there's a so-called black presence in that region to begin with, how would it be far fetched that there would be the Jews, the Israelites, that they would also be men of women of color? Yeah, put a one in the chat if you all understand what I'm saying. Put, put a one in the chat if that makes sense to y'all. All right. Um, and there's a, there's a lot more I want to go into. Let's see. We're not done yet. We're not even close to done. Okay. We all understand that, right? Um, but let's keep going with what she's got to say. Bonner Private Wine Partnership. So today. Okay. She has a, a sponsor. Who cares? Anyway, let's go back. So we have this article by Bounding into Comics about the Book of Clarence. And I love the title, Blasphemous, the Book of Clarence film backed by rapper Jay-Z pushes black Hebrew Israelites propaganda with race swapped Jerusalem. Really, what more is there to say about this film? But it is written, quote, in an interview with Ebony, Samuel emphasized how important portraying ancient Israel as black is to the narrative of the film, declaring, as much as we love these films, there are no black people in there. What happens when we, people of color and powerful women, occupy and inhabit a space? I know I had to put our spin on it and inject our flavor into it, he elaborated. Does this guy not think that, like, Middle Easterners count as people of color? Is there it goes. Middle Easterners. You guys, saw, you guys understand how ridiculous that sounds? Middle Easterners? You know what? When you go to the Middle East, that region, and you ask the people that live there, people in Iraq, people in um, Syria, Assyria, people in Lebanon, people in Jordan, do you know what they're never going to call themselves? Middle Eastern? Because, again, we just got done looking up. The term Middle Eastern is a geographic location. It is not a description on a people group. Do you understand that? That's like calling somebody like an African, for example. Well, there's a multiplicity of people that live in Africa. In North Africa, you have people of um, Arabic descent. In South Africa, because of the British colonization of South Africa, you have Europeans in there. In West Africa, people in West Africa are not the same as people in East Africa. People in Central Africa are not the same as people in North Africa. So to say, well, does she not understand that people, that Middle Easterners exist? Think about this for an example, right? The United States of America, black and Hispanic people are referred to in this country collectively as minorities. Why are we referred to as minorities? Because we make up the minority of the population of the United States. Who makes up the majority of the population of the United States? Europeans do, so-called Caucasians. But wait a minute, they're European. That means they come from Europe. So how is it that the majority of the people in the United States are of European origin? Oh, I know why. Because of colonization, because of uh, uh, conquest. And then people being displaced. That's what you see all throughout, especially in that region. One of the most contested regions in the history of the planet Earth. Maybe the most contested region in the history of the planet Earth. There's a war going on right now over that region. There have been there was holy wars over that region where you had the, the Christians overtook that region. And then you had the Muslims overtake that region. Now, I understand that a Christian is a religion and to be a Muslim is a religion. But when you look at the predominant people of the Crusades, when you look at the, the Muslims, these are, by and large, people of Arabic descent, right, during, during the time of the, of, the, of the Crusades. And then when you look at the, um, the, the, the Christians during this time, these are largely a, uh, a group of European people. So when one group would occupy Jerusalem, are you going to – so when the Christians occupy Jerusalem, these uh, Europeans – now, now they're now the you know the original Jews are now white because the people who currently at that point occupy it they're themselves white. No, people throughout the annals of time have been displaced. 
the Jews, according to the Bible, were to be displaced right now. That's why in Luke 21 and 24, let's just pull it up real quick. Luke 21 and 24. I'll just read it in the NLT. Uh, or no, I'll pull it up on screen. Luke 21 and 24. It says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. The Jews were prophesied to be led in slavery all over the place. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So according to the Bible, the actual ethnic descendants of the Israelites would not be living in the land of Israel. But rather, foreign nations will be occupying their territory. So right now, the nation of Israel is a nation in exile. The actual people of the book do not currently live in their homeland. So the people who live there, they are not the real people. Right. The, the Middle Easterners. Those are not the people who are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. They're not. So the so to come with the narrative that because Middle Easterners are so-called Middle Easterners, whatever the hell that is, they currently live in that territory, that that means it's ridiculous to say that so-called black people once lived in that territory is foolish. Now, how do we know it's foolish? Well, we just got done proving it. Who and we're going to further prove it more. We're not done. Cush, Genesis 10 and 8. Begat, uh, was begat Nimrod. Cush is again where you get the Ethiopians from. Nobody's going to deny whether or not the Ethiopians are so-called black people. And Nimrod's territory expanded all the way from parts of Iraq into parts of Syria. We look at the Philistines. They are descendants of Ham as well. They were just north of Israel. Then when you look at the Canaanites, these are also descendants of Ham. And where did the, where did the Canaanites live? Well, let's just see. Let's just see. What is the land of Canaan? Let's just look at the land of Canaan. Land of Canaan. Um, okay. Let's look at, hold on. I want to look at a map of the land of Canaan. Look at this. Uh, I can't really see. Here we go. Look at this. This is, you know what the land of Canaan is? The land of Canaan is called is Israel. <laughs> so descendants of Ham, people that nobody will dispute are, you know, a so-called black people. They once lived in the land of Israel and they actually lived in the, in the land of Israel even during the times of Christ. We just got done talking about the woman that, in the land of Tyre and Zidon, a Canaanite woman. She lived in, uh, in Israel around that place during the time of Christ. That's why when you go into the Bible... Before that land was called Jerusalem, before that city was called Jerusalem, it was called something completely different. Look at this. Joshua 10 and 1. Now it came to pass when uh, Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai. This is Joshua's conquest of the Levant. And who is Joshua uh, conquering when he's in the Levant region? He's conquering several groups of people, chiefly the Canaanites, these are descendants of Ham. Look, that's, well, let me get the scripture when it says before it was called Jerusalem. It was called. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Mm, let's see. It was called. Nope, 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 nope. One second. Uh, nope, I can't find it. Where is that? It was literally it said it was called before it was called Jerusalem. It was called. Let me see if I can't find it. Y'all can fact check me. No problem. Um, let me just take a look at the word Jerusalem. Let's just see. Mm. Dang, I can't find it. It's all right. One of y'all help me in the chat. But the point is, the land of Israel was occupied. That whole region, everybody understand, that entire region was at one point in time occupied by different groups of Hamites. You had the Philistines to the north. You had the Canaanites who actually lived in the land of Israel. Then prior to that, you had the Cushites. Uh, the, well, uh, 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 
Is it Luz? It might be. I'll look it up. You had uh, Nimrod and the Babylonian Empire. Well, the not the Babylonian Empire that we see in, in Isaiah, but when he built the Tower of Babel and built his kingdom, it expanded from parts of Iraq, modern day Iraq, all the way into parts of Israel uh, or Assyria, rather. Joshua 15 and 8, the water. I think that's Alzar. Um, so let me bring this out real quick. Joshua 15 and 8. Um, let me see. Joshua 15 and 8. Maybe I'm missing it. There's one that literally says before the name of that place was before called um, Jebus. Okay, Joshua 18 and 20. Okay, the water, the water. Jebus, that's what it was called. Perfect. Joshua 18 and 28. So let me pull that up real quick. Eighteen and twenty-eight and Zalot at the Jebusite, which is Jerusalem. Perfect, 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 perfect. There we go. Watch this. Joshua eighteen and twenty-eight. Now let's get some context. This is the territory of Benjamin. So this is when, when the Israelites go into the land of Canaan. It's the land of Canaan at this point. But then we conquest the land, and then we divide the land by allotment per tribe. Certain tribes get this city. Certain tribes get that city. And then at the end, look what it calls Jerusalem. Verse twenty-eight. And Zalah, Eleph, these are cities, and Jebusai, which is Jerusalem. Well, what does it mean, Jebusai, which is Jerusalem? Let's look at the word Jebusai. Jebusite, descendants of Jebus, descendants of the third son of Canaan, who lived in or around the site of Jebus, the early name for Jerusalem. So let's go back to what this woman said and she with this pompous, arrogant attitude in which she spoke. Let's see what she said. As much as we love these films, there are no black people in there. What happens when we, people of color and powerful women, occupy and inhabit a space? I know I had to put our spin on it and inject our flavor into it, he elaborated. Does this guy not think that, like, Middle Easterners count as people of color? Is it has nothing to do with whether or not the man uh, identifies Middle Easterners as people of color. First of all, the term Middle Eastern is, again, it's not an ethnicity. That's, that is not an ethnic background. Middle Easterner is no different than a Northwesterner. Do you know what type of, what people live? If, imagine next time somebody tells you Jesus Christ was Middle Eastern, say, okay, that's cool. I'm, what, about, what are the people in the Southeastern? What do they look like? They're going to say, what are you talking about? Okay, what about the Northwestern? What do they look like? They're going to say, well, I don't know. Middle Eastern is a geographical location that was coined by English people. That is not a... That is a very new thing in the earth to be referred to as a Middle Eastern. First of all, in the Middle East, even because you know what someone's going to do when they talk about the Middle East? They're just going to say Arab. That's what they, when they say Middle East, they just mean Arab people. Don't you know that people in Iran are not the same as people in Iraq or people in Afghanistan? They're not the same ethnic group of people. They're not just because they live in that area. There is a multiplicity of people that live in the Middle East. That's true to that's true now, and that's been true for hundreds, even thousands of years. But what we have illustrated is the prior to prior to Christ, Canaanites, uh, Cushites, uh, Philistines, people from Zyre, uh, Tyre and Zidon. These are these are so-called black people. These are Hamites. And again, why do we go there? Because no one's going to dispute whether or not Cush is a so-called black person. Kush just the Ethiopians. Are you going to go to Ethiopia or, or, or Somalia or Djibouti or Eritrea and tell them that they're not a black people? No, you wouldn't. And their relatives, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Philistines, they occupied a territory right in the Levant, so-called Middle East region. So to come with the narrative that, again, it's just so far fetched and laughable to say that there were black people in this region is, is really ridiculous. Um, but it just goes to show you the 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 level of hatred that the Israelites, that so-called black and Hispanic people have all throughout the earth. Let me get a quick scripture because it's it's really a curse that this is occurring to us. Deuteronomy 28 and 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead you. That's that's a curse to us being referred to as proverbs and bywords. Um, and what's a, a proverb in uh, basically that it's it's impossible for us to be the people of God. You're just you're just so-called black people. There's no black people over there, but because they don't look at us as special. They look at us in the way that we 
have been treated by other groups of people and in the way that we treat ourselves. And they don't look at us as, yeah, these are God's people. They look at us as the opposite. And that's been true of the of the Israelites all throughout the Bible. So I'm going to get a scripture on that. But this is again, this is just to illustrate very briefly a so-called black presence in the Levant, Middle East, uh, ge you know, ge geographical locale. But let me get a quick scripture on what I was just speaking on earlier. This is Lamentations chapter 2. And look at this, y'all. Lamentations 2, and I'll start at verse 15. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? Now, Lamentations is around the time of Jeremiah. This is during the time when the Babylonians came and they conquered us. And it says that the heathen, all of our enemies, they, they pass by and they clap their hands at us. What does that mean? <sighs> it's mockery. That's what they're doing. They're mocking us like what they do to this day. And what do they ask? Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? You're telling me that these, these black people and these Hispanic people, these are God's chosen people? <laughs> That's what it means when it says they hiss. That's It's a form of mockery. <sighs> Look at you. You're telling me these people, they're... They're killing each other, making songs about it, degrading their own women, uh, letting each other sell drugs to each other's best friends, mamas, saying only God can judge them. Look at these niggas, man. That's what, this is what they're saying about us. It says, all thy enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found. We have seen it. Zion, what's up, my brother? But this is the heathen have always had this mindset towards us. The Israelites have always gone through this to where we get annihilated. We get destroyed and conquered by our enemies and they make mockery of us. And then over the course of several centuries, when we are displaced and living amongst other groups of people and uh, adopting their ways. Now it's 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 we're told we're so far removed from our actual culture uh, and we act so against our culture right now that it's. It's, it's completely ridiculous in the eyes of most humans that we are even related closely, that we even have anything to do with that location, let alone the Israelites there. That's how bad it is. That's how bad it is. Not only is it no way, there's no way that we're the Israelites, let alone even living over there. That's how far removed we are from our culture. Um, and of course, a lot of that goes with what we just spoke on earlier, with displacement, with, with slavery. Um, and displacement doesn't just take place. Let me say this, too. Displacement doesn't just take place because of conquest. That's one of the principal ways that people are displaced, as uh, evidence we just read Luke 21 and 24, about how the Jews would fall by the edge of the sword, the Romans would persecute them, kill them, and kick them out of their land. But that's not the only way that a people group is displaced. Um, and the Israelites have been, uh, the Israelites, bro, I, I just clicked the X on, thank, thank God. That StreamYard did not let me just end this because I just clicked the X button on accident and it said, are you sure you want to exit? No. But um, the Israelites have been displaced, not just because of conquest. And not only the Israelites have been displaced, not just because of conquest, the, the ancestors of the Israelites were displaced, uh, not just because of conquest. Why did let's just we can I'll just quote it. Why did Jacob and his sons, why did they dwell in the land of Canaan? Or why did Joseph, uh, why was he in Egypt? And then what did he warn his people about or the Egyptians about, about a famine in the land? Let me see if I can find that out, if I can uh, pull it up real quick. All right, perfect. Let me go here. Perfect, right? Genesis 12. Let's just get Genesis 12 right quick. Genesis 12, and I'll start at verse, I'm going to read it in the NLT, just an easier read. Genesis 12, and let's start at verse um, 7. Let's start at verse 6. Abraham traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp beside the oak, uh, the oak of Moray. At that time, the area was inhabited by the Canaanites. Well, let's see, where's Shechem? Shechem is a city in Manasseh. So it was at that point occupied by the Canaanites, but later one of the tribes of Israel, Manasseh would go to occupy that place. 
And again, it said who at this point occupied it? The Canaanites were there, right? It says forcing Abraham to go. Oh, let me go back. My bad. So that's where he was. Then he continued traveling. Verse nine. Abraham continued travel uh, south by stages toward the Negev. Verse 10. And at that time, a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, which is where our ancestors. Uh, that's our ancestors land. Forcing Abraham to go down to Egypt where he lived as a foreigner. Right. Abraham had to go through that. Then Genesis chapter 26. Isaac had to go through that. And there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar, where the Philistines lived, just north of Israel. So that's another reason why a people group can be displaced. Famine, war, etc. But um, again, this is, and I hope this is a very, very simple crash course um, introduction, really, just on the so-called black presence in the Levant and Middle East regions. And I hope this can equip y'all when somebody comes with the notion that there were no black people over there or that Christ himself was not black and that it's far fetched to even believe so. Remember, Israel is situated where? In between. Well, really, Israel is the Nile to the Euphrates. Right. Which Egypt is um, Misraim is a descendant of Ham. Then you have to the to the just south of Egypt, you have the Sudan. Right. Then you have even a little bit more south. Cush. That's currently. But when you look at the biblical context, you had the Philistines that were to the north. The Canaanites once inhabited that land. And then you had the Mizraimites to the south. So the Israelites are literally right in between several different groups of Hamites whom nobody will say, nobody will disagree with our dark skinned people or, or rather our so-called black people if Cush isn't. Right. So um, I wanted to go into that. We're going to keep playing her clip. But um that's just an introduction, again, on um, the, the, the black presence in that area. Now we're going to go a little bit more in depth into the Israelites themselves. So I've got a few things that I want to pull up. First and foremost, we are going to go with the Bible, right? So let's go to the Bible, and we'll go to some descriptions of the Israelites. And what do they look like? Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Uh, it says, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called. What is this word? Now, someone's going to say that word is not the N word. That is Niger. Well, the country of Niger was not even a concept 2000 years ago. Number one, uh, of course, it, it existed, obviously, because it's a part of Africa, but it did not exist as Niger. But let's take a look at what this word is. Let's see. Here we go. Strong's 3526. Let's see how the word sounds. Strong's G 3526. Niger. Niger. But that sounds. Wait a minute. Let's play that one more time. Strong's G 3526. Niger. Niger. Now, I'm probably that's probably going to be the last time I play it because um this 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 video might get chopped <laughs> because of how clearly that word sounds like a word that we have all been called a few times in our life. More than me, more than a few thousand times. Right. But that's the word that let's go back. Let me I don't even know why I pulled the screen down. Let's go back. Acts 13 and one. Barnabas was called. Sorry. Simeon was called Niger. <laughs> right. And what does that word mean? Let's see what that word means. Black. It means black. So do you think they just called this guy black for no reason? You think they were, and, and I'm glad somebody said this. I'm Mexican and I've been called nigga before. Because blacks and Hispanics, we are all the same. We are all the same people. Uh, King JSK, Tawada, Yabba, Shana, I appreciate y'all showing love, man, for real. Y'all been showing a lot of love on this channel the past month. And really encouraging me to, you know, keep doing these videos. I, I have been putting off doing a channel for years, but um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know I had this much, much love from y'all. So I definitely got to keep going. So, um, again, so-called black and Hispanic people, we are one of the same people. We are all just, just different shades of brown. And make sure you put a pen in that. Uh, Mike two nine eight Thawada Yaba I appreciate you, family. Um, we are all just different shades of brown. Even when you look at the people in the Middle East. They are different shades of brown. 
They're no, they're, their skin complexion ranges in the same range as, as ours do. Really, everybody on the earth, except for so-called Caucasians and um, people from the, uh, from the East, people in like China and Japan, even they, well, no, even they uh, range from light to dark brown, right? Everybody really, except for Europeans, ranges in a similar color range, light brown, dark brown. And again, put a pin in that because we're going to revisit that. Now, let's get some more examples. So one of the men, uh, one of the disciples, not one of uh, the 12 disciples, but a disciple, excuse me, was called black. Now, why would they call him black if he wasn't that? Let's get some more examples. Let's take a look at the word Aaron. Aaron, who was a brother from the tribe of Levi, who was the brother of Moses. That same Moses who they mistook for an Egyptian, for the record. But let's take a look at that word Aaron. Aaron, Strong's H-175. Look at this. Now we go to the lexicon for that word Aaron. And look what it says. Hold on. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. It's not Aaron. It's Phineas, who is a descendant of Aaron. My bad. Phineas, a descendant of Aaron, brother of Moses, tribe of Levi, who was an Israelite. And um, let's see what he's called. Um, oops, my bad. Phineas, Strong's age 6372. Let's go to the lexicon for this. Look at this. The Negro. The Negro. Do we see it on the screen? Put it one in the chat. This is simple, bro. We can put, I put this together in 10 minutes, just sitting down in the, in the library just now. And that's not to say that, that is not me saying, oh, I'm so amazing. No, I'm saying that this information is so abundantly clear that it's so easy a caveman can do it. All it takes is an unbiased mind and a simple research. That's all it takes. Neg the Negro. So one of uh, Moses' relatives, one of Aaron's descendants, is called the Negro. <laughs> Why would he be called? So one of them's called the Negro. Another one's called Niger. So the Israelites in the Bible are all called the N-word, right? And then we're called the N-word, so-called Blacks and Hispanics. And now we are crazy for coming to a conclusion, or at least just proposing, huh, maybe there's a connection between us. Hmm. So we have those two things in the Bible, right? And then, of course, we have Revelation chapter 1, verse 14, when it says, Christ, uh, I, I beheld through in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and uh, girt about the paps with a golden girdle. He had a long robe on and a belt on. That's what a girdle is. His hairs, the hairs on his head were white and woolly. So he had white colored hair, woolly in texture. And then it says, and his feet like burnt brass. Who the hell else could that be talking about? Now, um, let's keep going, because, again, I, I didn't want to um, make this some long, drawn-out thing. I think all the information is, is very clear. And now I want to... Uh, Prince Amir Maccabees, I appreciate y'all showing love, family. Um, this, is, this is, again, this is a super, super quick, just brief dive into this. Um, and now let's go to some other primary sources. Now, this is in the Talmud. This is Mish Mishnah Negaim, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, the bright spot in a German appears as dull white, and the dull white spot in an Ethiopian appears as bright white. Rabbi Ishmael says, the children of Israel, may I be an atonement for them, are like boxwood, neither black nor white, but of an intermediate shade. So it says, Rabbi Ishmael. Now, who is this Rabbi Ishmael who says the Jews uh, at his time were neither black nor white? Well, Rabbi Ishmael is or was rather a rabbi of the first and second century. So he is a primary source on the description of what the Jews looked like in the first century. And let me ask you guys something. What century did Jesus Christ live in? What century did Jesus Christ live in? Do 
Jesus Christ was a first century Jew. Some scholars have him being born at 6 AD. Some have him at like 4 or 5. Nonetheless, it's the first century. Rabbi Ishmael was a, Jew, was, a, was a rabbi in the first century. And he said that the Jews of his time were like the boxwood tree. Uh, Yashar Allah Union, Thawada family, Thawada Yahabashim uh, Shabbat and Sylvia Walker, Thawada Yahabashim Shabbat I appreciate y'all family. All right. So he is an authority on the description of the Jews. Now he said they're neither black nor white. Doesn't that cut you, Hassan? You fake black Hebrew Israelite? <laughs> Doesn't that cut you? Because he said they're not black, but you're saying they are black. He said they're not black nor white, but they're in the middle, just like a Middle Eastern, right? Doesn't that prove what they're what what the she's saying? No, because he said they're like a boxwood tree. Now, what does a boxwood tree look like? Here we go. This is a um, this is an urn made out of boxwood. What color is it? This is. A, I'm glad I used this picture. Let me let me try to um, let me see if I can. It's okay. Y'all can see it. Y'all can see. It. And look at look at how it ranges. Look at the color of this of this uh, urn. It ranges from. You see at the top, it's light brown. Then some parts it's dark brown, some parts it's medium brown. And that is exactly what so-called black people look like. This is exactly what so-called Hispanic people look like. You go to Mexico, you're going to see this exact color range. You go to Dominican Republic, you're going to see this exact color range. You go to the Bronx, you're going to see this exact color range. You go to Ecuador, Nicaragua, Brazil, uh, Colombia, you're going to see this exact uh, color range. So-called blacks and Hispanics, we all range from light to dark brown. Let's show an example. Let's show an example. Look at this. You got light-skinned sister. You got dark-skinned sister. You got in between brown-skinned sister. You got some other brown-skinned, light-skinned, dark. We all range from light to dark brown. This is a very, 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 very simple concept, right? Um, so again, that let me let me share the source one more time. That is from uh, Mishnah Negaim two. I'll post the link in the um, in the uh, comment board. Here we go, and uh, that's 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 from the Talmud, right? So we can we can range like I'm a light skinned brother. Here's the thing, right? It's it's not about what anybody wants, right? I don't tell people that. Christ is a so-called black man because I just want him to be a so-called black man, right? It's not about what I or what anybody else looks like. I'm a light-skinned brother. I didn't go in the Bible and say, well, you know, uh, maybe he's light-skinned. No, the Bible describes him as being dark-skinned. It's so dark, it look like his skin burnt in a furnace. I don't look like my skin burnt in a furnace. I look like my skin was put, I look, my skin looks like it was put in a furnace for a little bit and then it got taken out real quick, Right. But uh, the truth is the truth is what I'm saying. Kilo, the water, you have I appreciate you, family. All right. Um, the truth is the truth, and it's just that. It's it's very simple. So what have we done this in this video? We've established that uh, in the Levant region, the so-called Middle East region, from from Assyria to Lebanon to the um, to parts of because again the Middle East comprises parts of Sudan as well. So from that so-called Middle East region, we've established a black presence in the south, in the north. And in the middle, the land of Canaan, which then became later known as Israel, right? The Philistines, descendants of Ham, the Cushites, descendants of Ham, the Canaanites, descendants of Ham, Zidon, Tyre, descendants of Hamites, right? Nobody will dispute if they are so-called black or not. Um, so why would you win as Christ? Oh, I know why. Because you've belittled and berated so-called black and Hispanic people for 500 years, made them feel like they're nothing, depicted yourselves as the Mary, uh, Mary, Joseph, God, Jesus, Michael, Gabriel, etc. And now you don't want to think about, well, wait a minute. If Christ is a so-called black man, well, what is he coming back to do? What, what's, how am I going to feel? How, is, how far is my heart going to sink into my stomach when I see a, per, a person that looks like the people that my people have been oppressing for the past 500 years crack the sky? They don't want to accept that reality. And it reminds me of a quote when I think it was Robert Kennedy, when he said, what if we go to heaven and we find out God is a so-called black person? Or I believe it was Andrew Jackson in his writing to um, Virginia, some, a governor of Virginia said, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just and that his justice cannot sleep forever. Referring to what? The atrocities that his people have committed against so-called black and indigenous peoples in this country. 
And they have to comfort themselves with the lie that they are the people, because if they embrace the truth that, no, that's our people, that Christ is one of us, then they have to embrace the fact that they've done the people of God wrong. And that's not a that's an uncomfortable reality. But somebody posted songs of Solomon one and five. I'm glad they did, because this will be a great teaching moment for for both parties, for ignorant Christians. And I don't say ignorant even to be to be rude. I mean, maybe you're just you didn't. You weren't aware of this information, but also Israelites who misappropriate and misuse this verse on a day to day basis. So Songs of Solomon one and five. I'm probably going to burst a few people's bubble. Songs of Solomon one and five. Let's pull it up. Does not does not does not prove that. Uh, well, not directly, at least prove that King Solomon was a so-called black man. Was he? Yes. Let me just get that out of the way. But Songs of Solomon one and five. This is not Solomon talking. Even look at the header. It says the young Shulamite bride and Jerusalem's daughters. So when the when it says in Songs of Solomon 1 and 5, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Let's zoom in. That is not King Solomon speaking. Now, that's OK. That is not King Solomon speaking. This is uh, they can have that. They can have that. It's not King Solomon. But again, it says the Shunammite or sorry, Shulamite. And the Shulamite is the one that says, I am black, but comely, O you daughters of Jerusalem. Now, what does it mean to be a Shulamite? Not Shalom, my bad. I'm probably going to spell this wrong like two times in a row. We're just, we're just going to go back and we're going to blue letter the verse. <laughs> we're not going to make ourselves look any dumber. Okay. So where does it say when she says, O Shulamite? Watch this. Let's, nope. Hold on, y'all. Give me one second. I'm going to be able to do this. Just give me a second. Perfect. Okay. We're going to copy that, paste it here. And then, of course, it's not even here. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, Shulamite. Again, Ike means descendant of. Strong's H7759. Shulamite, the perfect or the peaceful. Let's get the root word of Shalom, I believe is what it is. Um. Hmm. There's one I'm looking for in particular when it says it's a city in Issachar. Hold on. I'm going to find it. Um, let's see. Is it here? No, it just comes from Shalom. Damn, let me see. Where is it at? My bad. Let me try to find this. Um... Shunem, that's what it was. A person from Shunem. Okay, perfect, perfect. That's why I kept saying Shunem earlier. Okay. So what is Shunem? Perfect. All praise to the Most High. All right. Shunem, Joshua 19 and 17. Uh, we'll start at verse 17. Look what it says. The allotment for Issachar. This is one of the tribes of Israel, the fifth son of Israel. The fourth lot came out for Issachar according to its clans. Their territory included Jezreel, Kesuluth, and Shunem. So when it says that this sister is a Shulamite, it's a Shunamite, which is an Issacharite. So she's saying she is black and beautiful. She's black and comely because so-called blacks and Hispanics. Look, I went to school with I'm from the West Coast. So I went to school with a lot of Hispanics and there are Hispanics that are darker and just as dark as so-called black people. Put a one in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. I have seen some dark skinned Mexicans before. I've seen some light skinned Mexicans before. I am a light skinned black man. I have seen a lot of light skinned black men. I'm one of them. And I've seen a lot of dark skinned black men, so-called black men. Right. All the tribes of Israel from so-called Mexicans, so-called Puerto Ricans, so-called Dominicans, so-called Colombians. We all range so-called blacks and Hispanics from light to dark brown. Now, if this woman, this Shunammite, she's a she's an Issacharite and she is so-called black. Wouldn't it make sense that a lot of her relatives look the same or at least similar? There's a variety in color. You see that? Um, so I'm going to see if there's anything. I'm going to keep listening to her video a little bit more. Let's just see if she says any other foolishness that we would like to address. Let's see.
option that only black people are people of color because it kind of seems like it. He also says rapper Jay-Z would double down on Samuel's claims and further push the narrative that black people were in fact the center of biblical Jerusalem, noting that the director is fearless and a genius. He's not afraid to think big about things that put us as a people in places where we were a race, the rapper went on. We didn't exist in Western times. We all know that's false. And we didn't exist in biblical times. History would say otherwise. I Jay-Z's 100% right. I do not know what Jay-Z is talking about. I there we go. That's where that's where she should have stopped the video. She should this video should be three seconds long. This should this should be the entire video right here. Hold on. In biblical times, history would say otherwise. I do not know what Jay-Z is talking about. I that's that, that's that should be the end of the video. She should say, I don't know what Jay-Z is talking about. And then she should conclude with saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. And then she close the just close the lid on the uh, computer and then delete her channel. That's what she should do. She should end the video with saying, I don't know. That's the smartest thing she said this entire video is I do not know. I followed by don't know. Maybe the next word after that can be anything because this video has done nothing but expose the hatred, the, the ignorance of history, the ignorance of the biblical history, the ignorance of geography and her overwhelming amount of hatred and disdain that she has for so-called black and Hispanic people. That's what she's displayed. I have not heard a single person ever say that black people did not exist in biblical times. I mean, that's not OK. So now she also suffers from reading comprehension. Obviously, if you look at the context of Jay-Z's quote, when he's saying that the, he's not literally saying that there are people who don't say black people existed during biblical times. What Jay-Z is saying is that he's, he's going against the notion that during biblical times, there was not a black presence in that in the biblical area, the area where the Bible took place. That's what he's saying. Genius. I mean, they existed. It's a bit of a different conversation to ask whether they were in Jerusalem, especially in meaningful numbers. I think. Do we hear this? They were not. It's it's very questionable if they were in Jerusalem in meaningful numbers. Jerusalem is the land of Canaan. Now, guess what the Israelites did not do? We did not kick all the Canaanites out of the land of Canaan. Watch this. Now I gotta. Now I gotta really go in. Watch this. Threshing floor. Watch this. Second Samuel. Oh, she is busted. Watch this. I'm about to cut her head off. Meta uh, metaphorically, of course. Watch this. So let's start at Second Samuel 24 and 18. David builds an altar. Let's see where's David at. Where's David at? Okay. Where is he at? I'm going to read this a little bit because I believe he's in Jerusalem because look at verse um, 16. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now thy hands. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna, the Jebusite. And David spake to the Lord. Okay, so this is in Jerusalem, and there's Aruna the Jebusite is there. And Gad, verse, 20, uh, verse 18, Gad came to, uh, that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear uh, an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. Now, what is a Jebusite? Well, Jebus, the son of the third son of Canaan who lived in or around the site of Jebus, the early name for Jerusalem. <laughs> who are the Canaanites? The Canaanites are descendants of Ham. Who is another descendant of Ham? Cush. Who know, and who are Cushites today? Ethiopians. Will anybody dispute if they're black? Now she said in large numbers. Well, they're in large enough numbers to where when as soon as Christ in Matthew chapter 15 went to Ty the coast of Tyre and Zidon, which is just north of Israel, just a, you know some miles north, he encountered a, a Canaanite woman. All right. This is after, of course, we've already established Christ himself being a man with woolly hair and dark skin uh, in conjunction with the other Israelites, other Israelites, Simeon being called nigger um, uh, or nigger I hope for the video. Um, and is also Phineas, a descendant of Aaron, brother of Moses, tribe of Levi, called the Negro. Uh, Moses being mistaken for an Egyptian. Joseph in Genesis chapter 37, his own brothers don't recognize him and think that he is also an Egyptian. Egyptians, of course, come from Misraim, descendant of Ham. 
I could I could go into the angels and what they look like. I could keep going on and on and on and on and on. But let's keep going. Let's see what else she has to say. I think history is actually pretty clear that that, that was not the case. And just full numbers, I think history is ask whether they were in Jerusalem, especially in meaningful numbers. I think history is actually pretty clear that that, that was not the case. And I love it when people who think that they're smart try to say, try to speak on an historical fact as if it is an historical fact. Just because she says it with this weird kind of mannerism doesn't make it true. She's produced no sources. She's just talking. She's just talking her her arse off, so to speak. Let's keep going. And just for perspective, this is Black Hebrew Israelite talking points. The same talking points that, by the way, got Kanye West basically yeeted from public life and the entertainment industry entirely. So I'm actually kind of surprised that not only is someone like Jay-Z attached to this project, seeing how I would really made it clear how they feel about this ideology, but also also that this film is getting produced and made in the first place. And not only that, but it also stars James McAvoy and Benedict Cumberbatch, two very big mainstream actors who I would think would not want to attach themselves to a project that is, you know, influenced by the Black Hebrew Israelite belief system. But I wonder why. I wonder why that, that, uh, that, that ideology gets people canceled. I wonder why saying Jesus Christ and the people in the Bible were men of color. I wonder why that gets people canceled. I'll tell you why it gets people canceled. Here's why. John 3 and 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Now, here's the funniest part about it. The darkness that this is talking about is evil, right? Men love lies rather than the truth. And because the truth hurts people, now they just completely reject it. Men love darkness rather than light. Really, the darkness, the darkness that you should love is Christ. Because he's a so-called uh, dark-skinned man. Mikael, Tawada, Yehavah, Another perfect scripture. Lamentations 4 and 8. Their visage, you know what your visage is? Your appearance is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the street, and their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. Now, someone will go to that scripture and say, well, yeah, it says that their visage or that their appearance was black. That's just because of the famine. Have you ever seen a white person um, turn black because they were anorexic? I sure haven't. So what does it mean when it says their skin cleaveth to their bones? It is withered. It has become sick. If you look up a picture of a starving, uh, a starving Haitian boy or a starving Haitian girl, it'll uh, it'll show that they don't have their. Of course, their skin color doesn't change, but that glow that our people naturally have, they don't have that. That's why it says it is withered. It has become like a stick, right? Um, so that's what that's referring to. Another perfect scripture to illustrate the color in the Bible. Right. Exactly. Ariel. People being dirty, you know, like like um, our, our, our friend vocab said. But um, you, you guys see it's, it's very clear. Um, if you guys would like, I can definitely do a, um, a uh, another deep dive into this. Alizar has done several. Um, but if you like, I can kind of go into it a little bit more. One thing that I will say before I, I close out um is a lot of y'all, uh, Malakaya, Tawada, Yahweh, Shabbat, I appreciate you, family, and I appreciate all the support that y'all give, man, for real. And not even just like y'all sending donations, or what like that, none like uh, stuff like that. That's you know definitely appreciated. But all y'all that support by liking the video, commenting, sharing, uh, sending prayers up, please pray for the brother's side. All y'all doing that, I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate y'all. Um, and yeah, man, I, I was about to say. A lot of y'all that watch the videos, a lot, almost half of my audience is not subscribed. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button with the notification bell. And um, like I said in my first video, I'm totally open for all kind of ideas and anything that y'all want me to go into. I know to Zaparan and your call, if you if you brothers are watching this, y'all been wanting me to go into Daniel chapter two. I can I promise you I haven't forgot, brother. I got a lot of stuff that I got to do. I just had to work a 17 hour shift yesterday, so I'm. You know, I'm still in I'm still in recovery mode from that. But um, if y'all have any ideas, again, it's uh, at Hassad Sakari on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, now known as X. Um, you know, just reach out to me. Hey, brother, could you do a video on this? Could you do a video on that? And uh, and I can try to get around to it. If I don't 
in a, in a timely manner, I apologize. It's not because I don't care. It's not because I don't want to. It's, it's probably just because I've, I've, I've probably got some things going on. So um, all praise to the most high. I really appreciate the, you know, the support that y'all been showing. Make sure y'all like and share the video. Make sure y'all subscribe. All praises to the most high. This is this is good feedback that I got. I didn't I didn't know the middle of the day I could get about 600 live watching in here. So um, I'm gonna definitely be doing some more live streams in the future. I appreciate y'all showing love for real. All praises to the most high. I'm gonna close out and um, you know, I hope y'all learned something, man. All praise to the most high, uh, and shalom.